Although you're asking a living under a rock for the last year to not have heard of Apple AirTags, but now they've finally been announced, they've been billed as a product that will help you track personal items. However, it's not just personal items that could benefit from the tech behind AirTag, ultra wideband and U1. So let me take you down a little journey of imagination of how Apple could use the U1 chip to take HomeKit to the next level. Now, before we get started, and if you're into HomeKit or new and looking at HomeKit for the first time, then don't forget to check out the rest of the videos on the channel. We cover everything from news, reviews, and tutorials, and there's probably some content that'll be useful for you, so don't forget to check that out. And also, if you like what you see, it'd be greatly appreciated if you hit the subscribe button and also the bell button to be notified when new videos come out. You might want to follow us on our social accounts, particularly Twitter, where we're constantly putting out information related to HomeKit, new products and deals, and the latest new features. First, understand what ultra wide band can do for HomeKit and smart home. You first need to know how it works and our ultra band would add some benefit. Ultra wide band can send and receive relatively large amount of data but only over a short distance. So unlike traditional Wi-Fi, for example, which uses 2.5 and 5 gigahertz radio waves, ultra wideband transmissions occur up to 60 gigahertz frequency band. So it can pack a lot of information into those radio waves. Unfortunately, those waves aren't good over a distance and struggle to penetrate through walls or other obstacles, for example. So right now you're probably thinking, that sounds kind of limiting, and it is. However, it has two key benefits over other wireless standards. The first being it uses less power than most of these radios, and it's great for devices such as AirTags. But the most important one for us and what we're gonna be speaking about today for HomeKit, it can measure time of flight or spatial awareness. This means it can use ultra wide bands for very accurate distance, direction, and location measurements within a certain range. Similar to how GPS works outside of the home, this is like GPS for inside of the home. Ultra wide band calculates locations to with less than half an inch by measuring how long it takes for the short radio waves to hit the other device. And then it gives you that accuracy. Obviously the privacy aspect comes into play here. And because this is Apple and the type privacy controls they have in place, I don't think you would need to worry about what I'm about to talk about in this video if Apple implemented it as they would force the privacy aspects on other manufacturers and you would not have to worry about being tracked around your home. So that's all great and you now have a basic understanding of how ultra wideband works. What devices currently support it within Apple's ecosystem? In 2019, Apple introduced the U1 with the iPhone 11 that enabled ultra wideband support for improved spatial awareness. And then in 2020 with the iPhone 12, they then continued the rollout of U1 support with the Apple Watch Series 6. Then in October, we all got the HomePod Mini. And again, this arrived with U1. Now, the interesting thing is the Apple TV that's just been announced doesn't have this technology. Now, currently, the Apple devices that currently support you on utilize this technology, in my opinion, in a fairly basic way. So when used with an iPhone, you can point it to another iPhone and use it to airdrop things. Then with the Unpod Mini, you can hand off content from the iPhone and vice versa. But for me, this is a waste of this type of tech, like you want an ultra wideband, and you could actually achieve all of these things using either Bluetooth or Wi-Fi. But now with AirTags, things have stepped up a little and the company is using this tech in a more progressive way. This is because I've already mentioned ultra wide band can locate a device with pinpoint accuracy, meaning that air tags, as long as they're within a certain range, finding them is straightforward and quick. So you're now probably thinking, well, what do air tags have anything to do with HomeKit? Well, it's not necessarily air tags per se, but the tech behind them right now, HomeKit makes use of voice, buttons, switches, motion sensors, and contact sensors to allow users to interact and control devices. You can also use automations and scenes that allow auto control over HomeKit accessories in your home. But with ultra wideband, things could change and, it, and this could add far more to your HomeKit setup and make it more personable and allow for more personal controls. So an example of this, 
If a user is wearing, say, an Apple Watch with a U1 built inside and a HomePod Mini is in within a room, then when a user walked into that room, HomeKit would know the person's location. So if you were then entering that room and your Apple Watch on your wrist or an iPhone, it could trigger HomeKit compatible accessories automatically. The same thing applies if you're walking up to your house and again, using an Apple Watch or an iPhone, you could wave it close to your lock to unlock it. But taking it one step further, if Apple could use the U1 with automation rules for certain times of day, for instance, means it could trigger devices to act in a certain way. So in the, even if you walked into your bedroom, it could set the lights to a warm color. Whereas if you walked into the living room in the morning, it could raise your blinds, turn your HomePod onto your favorite playlist based on your presence and your location within your home and also your preferences that HomeKit has learned. Then going a step further is with automations and U1 chips actually built in to devices by the manufacturers, giving those devices spatial awareness. For instance, you could have an area in your home with a light that you use for reading, or like me, I use an iPad in this particular location in my studio, and I currently control this with Siri to turn it on and off. But what about if a device maker built a U1 chip into the HomeKit accessory, and this was all certified by Apple. So remember when I said U1 is a bit like GPS in your home, and you can measure distance between a device, and it knows where you are? Well, if I was wearing an Apple Watch, or carrying around my iPhone with U1 built in, and based on the automation rule, then when I sat down, the light could automatically detect me, know where I am relative to the, the position of that light, and turn on and select a preferred lighting for the time of day or what I've set, or even use HomeKit adaptive lighting. I would also love to use this type of example to walk into my studio and go to my desk. If a U1 chip was on my desk or in that location, it could turn on the monitor control via HomeKit enabled smart plug and then activate my working lights. If I then walked away, it could dim the lights and just learn based on my preferences. HomeKit could also use presence detection with a U1 to determine if a room is empty. And after a certain period of time, it could turn off lights and turn down eating controls to save energy in that room. Ultra wideband could also make Siri smarter potentially. Some people see Siri as being rather basic for HomeKit control. And sometimes it can be frustrating to people repeat commands or string commands together in order to get what they want. And I agree with some of this in part, but a voice assistant and a smart home platform should never be confused. But what would be a significant change is if Siri suggested scenes, automations, like it does on an iPhone with directions or other content. By using AI and machine learning with data from HomeKit devices, then using U1 to track your movement patterns in your home Apple could make HomeKit smarter and actually suggest changes within your home or use of accessories. So for instance, if you walked into a room and you had multiple scenes for that room, then using machine learning, AI, and depending on the time of day, Siri could suggest a scene via a HomePod announcement when you walked into that room. This feature would then allow you to interact with Siri and either confirm that that scene is the right thing to do or that accessory to turn on, or you could also request something else if Siri was more interactive in this way. Obviously, Apple would need to work on the privacy side because currently Siri only listens when you say those favorite words. So Apple would need to find a way to allow this feature to come forward if it certainly did, but maintain user privacy so it wasn't constantly always listening. So whilst I've already explained the tech behind AirTags, you're probably thinking, well, what have AirTags actually got to do with HomeKit and how would there be any use? And while the HomePod Mini has a U1 chip built inside, and by all accounts, this is sold really well. In fact, I have five of them in various different rooms scattered across my home. And if Apple did go down this route and using U1 in HomeKit would work really well for me. However, the HomePod mini is £99 or $99 versus an AirTag, only $29. So it would make sense for both Apple and the consumer to use an AirTag if the company went down this route with U1, as this would be a lower cost to deploy AirTags versus a HomePod mini 
in various different rooms. Plus there is situations like in a bathroom or a room which is not practical to have a HomePod that the AirTag would work really well. So using a AirTag to work within HomeKit in this way if Apple went down this route would make perfect sense. So while this video is pure speculation and Apple could never go down this route, evidence is suggesting by various different patents and various different things that Apple have put out there that Apple is gonna be using ultra wide band possibly in this way and making HomeKit and Siri smarter and far more powerful. Utilizing U1 in this way would enable HomeKit to be more personable, allow users to get more out of HomeKit with little effort and allow it to be a real smart home. And this will certainly, in my opinion, start to move away from motion and contact sensors, which are pretty old technology and truly making it a smart home and adding real value. WWDC 2021, just around the corner, we'll hopefully see what Apple has in store for us for HomeKit. So hopefully they will release some of these features. Hopefully they'll come forward with some of these new improvements and talk about how they're gonna use U1. Or they could not, and it could be a future thing that we see later down the line. But certainly all the foundations and the paths have been formed in order for Apple to go down that route. Now, this is the end of the video, so thank you very much for watching and hopefully you found this insight useful. I've certainly enjoyed researching it and looking into it and finding out. So if you've liked this video, don't forget to give me a thumbs up. And also, if you're not a subscriber, hit the subscribe button and also the bell button. And as I've already mentioned, check out our social media platforms, particularly Twitter, where we're constantly putting out information around HomeKit. Thank you very much. I'll speak to you soon.